Welcome to the 2023 Antigua Forum hosted by the Universidad Francisco Marroquin, a free market university here in Guatemala. Today we are with Grace Vidalic, who is the manager of the Dissident Project, a new initiative from Young Voices, a nonprofit talent agency for rising professionals in public policy. Grace is also a writer, performer, and manager based in New York City. Her acting has been featured on Netflix, HBO, and several pre-Broadway workshops. She has also written for political candidates and magazines, as well as theatrical reviews for the New York Sun. Welcome, Grace. Thank you so much for having me. So you're here at the Antigua Forum for the first time, and you're here as a project owner looking to increase the impact and effectiveness of the Dissident Project. Can you tell us a little bit more about when the Dissident Project was started its mission and the kind of initiatives that you've undergone so far. Yeah, absolutely. The Dissident Project was started in June of 2022 after our founder, Daniel DiMartino, was invited to a high school uh, in Algonquin um, up in, in Massachusetts. And tell me a little bit about Daniel's background. Yeah, so Daniel is a Venezuelan dissident. He came over uh, to the States in 2016 and he joined Young Voices in 2018 and then his piece in the US in USA Today went viral and became 2019's most engaged piece about Venezuela worldwide. Um, and it had over 5.5 million shares, according to the Atlantic Council. You know, having experienced that, having experienced this very emotional reaction that the students had to his, his conversation um, and his story, his personal story, he thought to himself, you know, if I, as a dissident speaker, can influence the next generation of American students with the ideas of liberty in this way, and I can actually make an emotional impact at the same time, uh, you know, why can't others as well? And so he came up with the idea for the Dissident Project. And um, the first class of speakers is five speakers from around the world. We have speakers from Venezuela, from Eritrea, from Hong Kong, um, and uh, from North Korea as well. And we're bringing on a second class of speakers in March, which is very exciting, adding people from Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, mainland China, Cuba, uh, and a, a variety of, of different locations. And so we're very excited about the progress thus far. That's great. So the Dissident Project provides American high school students with access to you know, informed perspectives on authoritarianism and socialism. Yeah. Um, through, through these firsthand experiences with these speakers. How have some of the speakers um, been received by high school students? And also, uh, how has it been received by teachers? A variety of different ways. Um, students leave very informed, and teachers have been giving us the same feedback. You know, that our speakers are professional, our speakers are uh, engaging, and our speakers are emotionally impacting. So we're, we're very thankful. That's great. And do you have a um, sort of a minimum number of students that you'd like to reach when you go to these schools? Yes. We request that there be 50 or more students that are impacted uh, over the course of that day. However, we also do virtual engagements for teachers who, who are not able to meet that threshold. Why did the Dissident Project choose to specifically outreach to high school students? Mm. Um, and why is that maybe perhaps the most important audience for your message? By the time that students reach the college classroom, they have already been faced with many different political ideologies. They've already engaged in political conversation. And a lot of them already sort of have their ideologies formed by the time they reach the college classroom. And so we believed at the Dissident Project that the sort of target market for these speeches where they would be most impactful would be high school classrooms before they've been uh, indoctrinated or, or before their ideology has really solidified. Um, and in addition to that logic, you know, the college campus market is saturated with groups, people, organizations that are doing great work in the liberty sphere. And we really didn't see any sort of equivalent on the high school market. You have an in-person speaker series. Uh, what other platforms might you use to reach the high school students, you know, like social media, anything yeah. else? Actually, one of the things that we have talked about at the Antigua Forum is how we can maximize those social platforms. So we have Twitter, right, at Dissident Proj, if you guys want to follow along. Um, we have Instagram with, with the same handle. We have a great website where um, We've got spotlight videos of all of our dissident speakers, and they comment on world events and on, on political events that are happening around the country and the world. Um, but one of the 
really wonderful things that we got out of Antigua Forum was a marketing strategy moving forward, was a social media strategy moving forward. And so we're excited about, about implementing that when we get back to the States. Great, yeah, you know, along those lines, um, how, has the, how has the process here at the Antigua Forum been for you as a project owner? These past few days have been two of the most fruitful, professional days that I've ever experienced in my life. Um, the format of the conference really allows for so much information to be shared, so many ideas to be tossed, tossed around. Um, and if you enter with humility and you're not holding onto your project too tightly um, so that you're not missing things, um, you can walk out with uh, an entirely new infrastructure, with incredible ideas, with uh, a scalable business model. Um, and I have found it to be Again, two of the most Im impactful days I've ever experienced. With the dissident project, which is mostly focused on bringing immigrants and their stories firsthand in person to mm -hmm. high school students, yeah. do you see a contrast to what they think they're coming to a country like that? And yet, sometimes within the United States, we find a lot of closed minds and, and maybe singular thought in, in certain areas as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Abs and, and that's another reason for the dissident project, if we can be just very clear about it, is um, not only to educate about the different totalitarian regimes that these dissident speakers are, are, are fleeing, but to educate and to instill gratitude about the country that we've all been blessed to be born in, to have citizenship in, um, and to right to, to build a sense of, of, of gratitude that we live where we live, um, and that we, our founding principles are what they are. Um, and so we hope that every student walks out of these conversations more informed, emotionally impacted, and feeling very grateful for what they've been afforded. Great, well, I think gratitude's a nice place to land the plane here. Uh, Grace, we wanna thank you so much for being part of the Antigua Forum. We hope to see you back here, and we wish you the best of luck with the Dissident Project. Thank you, Francisca. This has been wonderful.